And that's basically how I had a mental breakdown writing my second book. Hi, I'm Marty. I'm a traditionally published author who publishes under the pen name Karin Nordine. And this is Pen and Trill, where I talk about all things reading, writing, and Ractaginos. Today I'm going to talk about the five major mistakes I made while I was writing my second book. So if that's something you're interested in, let's get into it. So to talk about how writing my second book almost gave me a mental breakdown, we have to go back to my first book. So I wrote my first book while I was at university in 2019. I finished it up and I sent it out to agents and publishing houses in 2020 and it was picked up by an imprint of HarperCollins on open submissions towards the end of 2020. I think I signed my contract at the beginning of October. Yes. I signed my contract at the beginning of October and I didn't have an agent so I did the entire thing on my own and the only help I had was from a literary attorney that I found who could kind of walk me through the contract process but essentially I was on my own. I was doing this by myself with no experience and it was my first book and I didn't know what I was doing. So something nobody really tells you when you get your first book deal, especially if you don't have an agent, is that there's a lot of excitement, your nerves are going like crazy, you're just really overwhelmed by everything that's going on, the entire process. You're just so grateful that somebody has taken an interest in your book and your work and you as an author that you can have the tendency to not stand up for yourself. And that can be a little bit dangerous. So when I got the contract, I looked it over. I had an attorney look it over as well to kind of walk me through what everything meant. And I was just on cloud nine, but I was also extremely overwhelmed. Now I had written my first book kind of quickly, but part of that had to do with the fact that it was my master's thesis for a master's in creative writing. And so I was on an academic schedule and deadline. Then I, only had about 125 pages of the book written by the time I graduated because that's all that was required for my thesis. And then I spent the rest of the summer before graduation finishing the book, polishing it up so that it was done by the time I graduated. So one of the things this imprint was excited about was the fact that it didn't take me long to write the first book. When you looked at it on paper, it really didn't seem like much time, but in retrospect, I had been kind of thinking about the idea for years, and even though the actual writing time didn't take a lot of time when you looked at a calendar, the actual thought process, character development, everything that went behind the book itself took up more time than I thought. So in my first contract, I technically had a six month window of time to write and turn in my second novel because this was for a two book deal and it was for a series so they wanted the second book in the series that went along with my first book. And when I saw that contract at first I thought, yeah, sure, I can totally write a book in six months because technically I kind of wrote the first one in six months but that was only six months condensed when really it had been, you know, over a period of time of at least a year. But I was excited, I was enthusiastic, I was like, hey, they want this from me, I am not working full time at the moment, I can devote all of my time to the second book, surely I can finish this book in six months and it will be fine, no problem. And technically I did make the six month deadline, but what I turned in was garbage. It was absolute garbage, it was trash. And I have to give it to my editor for being just a very sweet and kind person and writing back to me with all the grace in the world and telling me that there had to be some changes that were made. But I knew it was trash and it was garbage. And I knew that's what she was saying, but you know, in a very polite, professional sort of way. Basically what happened was I had six months on paper to write and turn in the novel. But what I hadn't considered was that I was going to be editing the first book with my editor for publication at the beginning of that six months. So technically I was supposed to be doing two books at the same time and I couldn't do that. And this was something I didn't know about myself. I didn't realize that I couldn't work on two completely different projects at the same time at that point in my career. I just hadn't learned the skills to figure out how to do that and how to do that successfully. So the first two months of that six month window I had to write that second book was basically spent editing my first book and that meant I only had four months to write the second book. You can see where I'm going with this. The thing about publishing is it's a job, it's a business. 
The publisher is there to make money. You are there to get books out to your readers and you have to meet your deadlines. And if you can't meet your deadlines, you have to let them know you're not going to meet a deadline so they can see if it's possible to extend the deadline or change the deadline. But you are essentially locked in, not technically because you know you can always ask for extensions, but it's in black and white that there are dates when your books are due and you have to turn them in on those dates. And I did turn in my second book by the date that it was due. But it was a really, really bad book. And we were locked into a publication date. So I basically then had to rewrite almost half the book. We're talking close to 250 pages in less than two months. My developmental edits on that book were monstrous. And by the time the book actually was done and ready and able to go on to the next editor, it had probably gone through almost seven rewrites in a period of six months. I do not recommend the strategy to anybody. Do not do what I did. In the end, it turned out all right. The book was very good. It was actually nominated for an award. It didn't win, but it was an impressive feat for a second book on a very strict deadline in the middle of the pandemic. And when I say in the middle of the pandemic, I'm talking about during lockdown when life was another thing entirely. So while it looked like a simple six months on paper, I didn't take into consideration the state of the world, my mental health, my living situation, my working situation, my ability to balance two different books at the same time and essentially juggle edits and drafting a new novel, and all of the other struggles and challenges and tension that came along with the fact that in the middle of that six months, I was also publishing my first book. My first book was coming out. So, pandemic, first book publication coming out, very fast six month window deadline for my second book, not having an agent to back me up, doing everything by myself, and I almost had a mental breakdown. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about the five mistakes I made while writing my second book so that hopefully you won't make it when you're writing yours. And while this video is told from the point of view of somebody who was on a publishing deadline, who was contracted with a traditional publisher, some of these things hold true for basically anybody writing a book. There are just some things you really should take into consideration when you decide you are going to take on a big creative project like writing a book, especially if you're going to put yourself on a deadline or if somebody else is putting you on a deadline. These are things you should think about, look out for, and try to do better than I did. So the first mistake I made when I was writing my second book was not asking for more time. I received the contract from my publisher, I saw the date that the book was due, I saw the date that they wanted to publish it, and I thought, well, I'm too afraid to say I can't do this. Which is honestly, it's a hard thing to admit to yourself. It's hard to admit, especially if you're a type A personality like me, it's hard to say to yourself, hey, six months, that's cutting it really close. You might not be able to do that. And I had that feeling when I saw my contract and I went against my own instinct and I just said to myself, you know what? I'm a go-getter. I am one of those people that was able to stay up last minute the night before a massive paper was due or a huge exam. I can do this. I can pull this off. It's not going to be a problem. It was a problem. So the first mistake I made was not communicating with my publisher and saying from the very start, you know what, I think I need an extended deadline. I think that six months is too short. I don't think I can produce a quality product in the time that you are asking me. And that's a big thing. The big thing is that in the publishing contract, it states that the work that you turn in at that deadline will be something that is of quality. It is something that they can produce, that they can publish. They know that it's gonna go through multiple redrafts possibly and that they're gonna go through multiple edits with multiple editors. But the basic idea is that the story you turn in is something that they can publish. And usually this is gonna be based on your first work. They're going to expect that the work you turn in as your second book is going to be equal, if not better, than your first book, which makes perfect sense. But in practice, doesn't always work out that way. So if I could go back and do it again, I would have told my publisher from the get-go, look, 
this is not enough time, I need more than six months, just because I have never written on a deadline before and I don't know what to expect and the state of the world is a little bit crazy right now and I didn't take into consideration any of those outside factors when I agreed to that time frame. Likewise, I think this is useful for somebody who's maybe making their own deadlines for their book and isn't on a publishing contract. It's great to have deadlines, it's great to have goals, but they need to be practical, they need to be attainable. It doesn't help you to put a very strict goal on yourself that you just can't get in the time frame you've set for yourself. And even if you do reach the deadline that you've set for yourself or your publisher has set for yourself, you might not actually end up with the quality of work that you expect of yourself. And if you are a perfectionist, like I think a lot of authors and creative people are, then you're going to be putting undue stress on yourself to create a project at a certain level of creativity and perfectionism that just really isn't doable. So when you're creating a deadline for yourself or you're setting your goals for yourself, make sure it is something you can actually reach. Make sure it is something you can actually do. And don't be afraid to stand up for yourself if you don't have an agent and you're working with a publisher directly. They will understand. The thing that I didn't quite get early on in my publishing career was that the publishers need the authors. They need your work and they want you to create your best work. They want you to succeed because if you succeed, then they succeed. So if you stress yourself out and turn in a bad project because you didn't have enough time to do your best, nobody is benefiting from that. And I think most publishers will be very accepting to the idea that you need more time from the get-go. So if you look at that publishing deadline that a publisher has set for you or that your editor has asked of you or that you have set for yourself and you think, oh, maybe I can't do this, then give yourself a little bit of grace to say, this is not attainable for me right now. In the future, you might get better at it. You might get faster. I actually did get faster at writing. I learned a lot from my second book, a lot about time management, a lot about plotting ahead of time and having a good outline so that I could be more efficient with my deadlines and my goals. And I was really able to see the return on that in my third book. But I really wish I had stood up for myself with that initial contract and said, you know what? I just don't think that I can handle this deadline. Is it possible to pick a more extended deadline so that I have more time? So that would be my first recommendation. Don't make that mistake. The second mistake I made while writing my second novel was not allotting enough free time for myself. By the time I realized that I was going to be writing this book on essentially a four-month deadline instead of a six-month deadline, I was freaking out. I didn't know what to do. I was like, I thought I had six months and then suddenly I had four months and it was really overwhelming. And it was also the beginning of 2021 and we were in lockdown here. People weren't going anywhere. We weren't even going outside for walks. I was trapped in my house. It was basically me and my cat. And normally I would love that. That's what I like. I like being at home. I like just being with my cat. I like being around my stuff, but this was different. And I think all of us who were working at the time that this was happening kind of know that sensation of just isolation and fear and panic and not really knowing what was going to happen in the world, worrying about our loved ones, friends and family, and just not having the connections we normally had. I was really overwhelmed. The one good thing is that basically all writers and creatives were overwhelmed at this time period. And if you read any books that came out around this time period, you'll see in the acknowledgements, a lot of them will be thanking certain people in their lives because of the pandemic and helping them get through the pandemic. They're actually kind of called the pandemic books, all these books that came out at this time period, because they were really hard to write because everybody's schedules were thrown off. And even the people who work from home normally and are used to staying at home and isolating themselves to get their work done, like authors and writers, were feeling this heavy weight of despair. And I tried to deal with this despair by basically overworking myself. I told myself, okay, I'm going to have a writing word count goal of say 1500 words a day. I'm gonna write 1500 words a day and this book is going to be done in say three months. And I told myself, I'm gonna do the NaNoWriMo method. I'm not taking a single day off until this book is done. Bad idea. So for that four months, I worked every single day. 
I didn't have a weekend off. I worked Saturdays, I worked Sundays, I got up in the morning, I was at my computer, I was working literally seven days a week. And because when you are a writer, you're always thinking about your book and you're always trying to plan ahead and come up with new plots, new characters, new storylines, I essentially felt like I was working 24 seven. It was really unhealthy for me in my own emotional state. It was really unhealthy for my living arrangement. All the people that were around me, friends, family, relationships, it was just bad overall. And if I could go back and do it again, I would have been like, hey, you're treating this like a normal job. Monday through Friday, nine to five, whatever you can write between nine to five, whether it's a hundred words, a thousand words, 5,000 words, that's it. Five o'clock, you're done. Dinner time, chill out on the couch, watch Netflix, play with my cat, you know, go for a walk, go for a hike. And on the weekends, no writing. That's what I would tell myself nowadays. That's actually what I do nowadays. And that's how I wrote my third book. And I did not drive myself crazy writing my third book. I think we really underestimate how important it is to take time for ourselves. When I'm on the couch and I'm watching an episode of Star Trek or I go to the movies, I sometimes have the tendency to think, wow, you are wasting time. You are being so lazy. You could be working on your next novel. You could be working on two novels. You could be doing this or that. But the body needs to recharge and the mind needs to recharge and creativity is a well. And when it's empty, it's really hard to put in the work. You need to take time for yourself. I definitely needed to take time for myself. And when I decided to put the restrictions on myself that I couldn't work on the weekends, and when I told myself, you have to go to the gym, you have to exercise, you have to go for a hike, you have to take time to sit down and watch those episodes of Star Trek because that improves your mood. When I accepted that about myself, my writing process got a lot better. But like I said, I didn't do that during that four months when I was writing my second book and I was a disaster. I was at the lowest of the low. It was literally the lowest point in my life. I was so depressed. And it showed in the final product, my final draft that I turned in, that I had to turn in because literally I worked right up until the deadline. It was not a good representation of who I was as a writer and it was not something that I was proud of. It eventually became something I was proud of when I went back and revamped it and fixed it. But at the time, I felt like my career was going to be over. I thought nobody is ever going to work with me again. So mistake number two was not taking free time for myself and not allowing myself to relax or just walk away from my work. That is really important. You need to take time for yourself. Okay, now if you consider yourself a pantser or a free rider, this next one is probably going to be difficult for you to accept. But my third mistake while writing my second book was not having a better outline. Now you have to keep in mind, I was on a very tight deadline. I had technically six months to write this book, but I ended up only having four months in reality. That is not a lot of time to just kind of whimsically pull ideas off the top of my head and still be able to form it into an idea that made sense from beginning to end. That is something that I can probably pull off in the future with some more practice, but at the time, I just wasn't capable of coming up with the ideas quick enough in a way that made sense. This was also a crime novel, and if you read crime novels or suspense novels or mystery novels, you know that there's a lot of intricate plot work that goes into those books. You have to have red herrings, you have to have multiple characters who could be the villain, you have multiple storylines with the relationships between the different characters, you're dropping clues here and there, and the idea is that the reader is following along this path that you have set for them, which is supposed to be a deceiving path until it wraps around and then, oh, big surprise. That is not easy to do on the fly. Now, because I was working with a publisher, my publisher did require a synopsis for the story that I was going to write, so I had a basic idea of what the story was about and how it was going to end and who the main characters were, but I did not have a very good day-to-day -day outline of this happens, then this happens, then this happens. In my head, I basically knew what the midpoint was going to be. I knew what the big climax was going to be. I knew who the villain was. I knew how I wanted it to end, but I didn't know all of those little steps along the way. 
and that really hindered my ability to write quickly. Now, I'm not saying that writing from the seat of your pants isn't a great way to write. It is a great way to write if you have time or if you're one of those people that can keep all of that information in your head very quickly and still be able to move on sequentially or however it is you write in a fast amount of time. I was not one of those writers back when I wrote my second book. I needed an outline. I needed a path to follow so that I could basically see where I was and how my progress was going. One nice thing about having an outline is you can check off which chapters or scenes you've written, and then you can see as you go along how far you are. You can see, oh, I'm 25% through. I finished the first 25% of the chapters, or I'm at the midpoint. I know I'm 50% way through. And then you can kind of gauge how much time it will take you to finish the book. If you don't have an outline, it can be really hard to see where you are in the writing process. And even if you say, oh, this book is going to be 100,000 words and I'm at 50,000 words, but if you're not at the midpoint, then it can be even more difficult to determine what you've actually written, what's actually usable, or what's gonna get thrown out before you turn your draft in. So the biggest mistake I made, especially being on such a short deadline, was not having an outline where all I had to do was get up, sit at my desk and say, okay, yesterday I wrote chapter 13, today is chapter 14, chapter 14 is about this, done, okay, write it. Once I did that, which is something I ended up doing for my rewrites, then the writing process was able to go much quicker, much smoother. Then I actually implemented this technique for my third book, which had a longer deadline, but still required me to finish in a timely manner. And it worked. I finished that book early. So if you're on a really strict deadline, either given to you by yourself or by your editor or by a publisher, consider making yourself an outline. It doesn't have to be super detailed. It can just be like one sentence. It can be protagonist finds clue number one, protagonist encounters villain. It doesn't have to be super specific. It just has to be enough to give you an idea of what it is you're going to write for that chapter or for that part of the book so that you can do it when you sit down for your writing time and then move on. Writing an outline can really cut your time in half. Writing an outline isn't always fun. Sometimes it can feel a little bit like it's too plotted out and honestly it might be, but you can always go back in during your edits and you can fix that. You can make it feel more free flowing or spur of the moment or whimsical. But if you have an outline, you at least know what needs to be written, when it needs to be written, and how far you've gotten. And then you can look at your deadline and see, okay, how far out am I from my deadline? Am I on task? Am I on time? Or am I going to completely miss this deadline? The fourth mistake I made while writing my second book was worrying too much about what the readers were going to think. Now, this is something that is difficult for all writers. And I think in the back of every writer's mind, we're wondering, are my readers going to like this? Are they going to enjoy this? Especially if it's a series, is it going to live up to the first book? And the general rule of thumb is that you should write the book for yourself, and that is true, but you should write the book for yourself with the knowledge that other people are going to be reading it, and this is a business. Your publisher has to sell your book. They have to sell it to your readers and your readers have to enjoy it. If they don't enjoy it, then they're not gonna buy the next one. And that can be a really tricky mental place to be when you're writing, especially if you're writing on a very short deadline and you're already worried about the first book, which just came out and there's a pandemic or any other event happening in your life that could be affecting your ability to concentrate. It's a lot, it can be really hard. And I recognized very early on in the writing process of my second book that I was very worried about what people would think. I was really proud of my first book. My first book was very personal to me. It had themes that related to situations in my own life and some of the characters were kind of based on people that I knew, people that I had lost. It resonated a lot with me. That story was very important to me. So I had a lot of passion for that book, but the book was also in very good shape by the time I turned it into a publisher. It was almost perfect. I won't say that it was completely perfect because no book is completely perfect, but it was in really good shape. It did not require a lot of developmental edits. The edit time on it was reasonably short, and I think that the final product was good. It was what I wanted of the book. And readers seemed to enjoy that. And I think they really connected with the personal issues in the book. I think they really felt that there was some truth in the story. But when I was writing my second book, 
I was really nervous because I thought, how am I going to pull off what I did with my first book in this time period that I have for the second? And the truth was, I couldn't do that. And looking back on it now, I don't think that I ever would have really been able to do it in the circumstances I was in at the time. If I'd had this video for myself back then, I think it would have helped, but it still would have been that difficult time period where not everything was going to work out perfectly. Although I think it could have been useful to have these notes for myself because then maybe I would have been able to stop and take a breath and walk away from the book. But regardless, I was spending way too much time worrying about what other people were gonna think, what the readers were gonna think. Are they gonna like it? Are they gonna buy it? Is it gonna do well? Is it gonna flop? And what was really difficult was my first book published in February. I was writing the second book at the time that it was published. And so I was getting all the feedback on the first book while I was writing the second book. And anybody who gets feedback on a piece of creative work knows that there are ups and there are downs, which is where I learned my other very important lesson, which is to not look at my reviews on Amazon after a certain date. But that's for another video. The big takeaway here is that when you spend so much time worrying about what your readers are gonna think about your book, you don't give yourself enough time to think about what you think about your book. And at the very basic core of writing a book, you are the first reader. And if you're not happy with it, nobody's going to be happy with it. Do I think it's possible to completely forget about what other people are going to think about your book? No, it's not possible. You are always gonna have that voice in the back of your mind thinking, okay, what is a reader gonna think about this scene? What is a reader gonna think about this character? But if you are constantly thinking about it while you're writing, you are never going to get the book you want written, at least not in a timely fashion. <laughs> Write the book, worry about what the readers are going to think later. You can always go in during edits and fix it to make more sense for the readership. You can always go back during the editing stage and change the things that aren't going to work for the readers. But if you don't have it written, you don't have anything to edit. So as difficult as it is, forget about what the readers are gonna think, just focus on writing the book. You also save yourself a lot of time and stress and depression if you just forget that the outside world exists while you're writing your book. Fifth and final mistake I made while writing my second book was not asking for help. Now, I'm one of those people who feels like everything they do has to be at a certain level of perfection. And it can be really difficult for me to ask for help. But I really wish I had asked for help earlier on in the process of writing my second book than I did. I basically waited until the day the book was due to email the book to my editor and be like, help, I know this book is horrible. I know I have to rewrite a bunch of it. I just don't know where to start. And if I had said that to her months before, she would have been like, hey, let's give you an extension because you can get an extension on your publishing deadlines with a traditional publisher. I don't know why I thought that all of these authors were always making all of their deadlines. I mean. I'm a George R.R. R. Martin fan. I should have known better. But basically, it's not unheard of for an author to reach out to their editor at their publishing house and be like, hey, I'm not gonna make this deadline or I've messed up something seriously in the plot and now I am 200 pages off track and I need to go back and fix things. They have heard that before. You will not be the first author who has had to ask for help. You will not be the first author who has had to ha ask for an extension. That happens all the time. And I wish I had known that consciously because then maybe I would have reached out, although knowing my own personality, I probably wouldn't have reached out. But like I said, this is one of those don't do as I did videos. If you're having trouble writing your book and if you're afraid that you're going to miss the deadline or that you won't be able to supply the quality of work that is expected of you, ask for help. Now, my editor on my second book and also the editor that I have in my third book, who is a different editor, have both been so open to helping me out. Every single time I turn something in, they'd be like, hey, if you need to jump on a call or a Zoom to discuss something, if you run into any problems in the plot, if you need to bounce ideas off of somebody, they were both super open about wanting to help if I ran into a problem. But on that second book, I guess I just felt like I had something to prove. I had to show that I could make the deadline, that I could do this professionally without stopping to consider the fact that the world was essentially falling apart 
and nobody knew how to deal with that. So I was not alone. And even outside of all the chaos of the external world, there can be a lot of different and substantial pressure that you put on yourself as an author that can make it difficult to make your deadline. But always ask for help. People will help you. Your publisher wants you to do well. Like I said before, they want your book to soar. They want your book to be the best of the best because then they will be more successful too. And the more successful you are, the more successful they are. You are an investment. Even if you're not the lead title at your publisher, your book still brings in money for them. And that's important. So they want you to ask for help if you need it. And I think it's important to point out that Asking for help goes outside of the writing process as well. I wish I had walked away from my office and asked my friends for help or my family members that I was close to. It's important to remember that you are an individual with life and relationships and things that you love that are outside of writing and you need those things to be a better writer. And sometimes asking for help just means calling up a friend and talking out your problem in your story and seeing if they say something that inspires a solution. Or even if they don't have a solution, just having somebody to talk to can help relieve a lot of that stress and tension and pressure that you put on yourself. And I didn't do that at all when I wrote my second book. I, I literally locked myself in my office and didn't come out for four months. It was so bad. But when I was writing my third book, I said to myself before I started the book, I said, hey, if I run into a problem, I'm just going to stop and I'm going to ask somebody for help. Whether it's asking a friend to weigh in on a plot problem, whether it means asking my editor to look at a chapter and see if it's working right, or whether it just meant calling up a friend with a dog who had to walk the dog and going for a walk with them so I got out of the house. Help comes in many varied forms and all of them are important when you are under the stress of a deadline. So I have shared with you the five mistakes I made while writing my second novel. So what is my overall takeaway advice? Well, first of all, give yourself a deadline that you can actually achieve. Make it something that you can handle. Make sure you're scheduling free time for yourself. If there's something you enjoy doing, do not cut it out of your schedule just because you're worried you're not going to make your deadline. If you like going for hikes or going to the gym or painting or reading or watching TV and those things relax you, that relaxation you get from those things may actually improve your working time. So make sure you schedule free time for yourself. Your entire life is not just your book. Consider having an outline, especially if you're on a very strict deadline. An outline can be very helpful from getting from one point to the next on a daily basis. When you sit down at your computer, you don't have to worry what's coming next, what is supposed to happen. You have a basic outline. It doesn't have to be in depth. Of course, the more in depth it is, the easier it might be for you to write or the quicker you might write. But a basic outline can really help you on the day to day, especially if you have a deadline looming overhead that you are worried about making or not making. Don't worry about what other people are going to think. People are going to have their opinions. People are either going to like your book or they're not going to like your book. And in the process of drafting your novel, there's nothing you can really do about that. That's something to worry about later. That's something for edits to deal with. Get your first draft written so that you have your first draft. You can always edit words that are written. You can't edit nothing. And if you're on a contract with a publisher and you do have in the back of your mind thoughts of, ooh, are my readers going to like this book? Remember that you can always edit to your readers later. It's good to have an idea of what you think they might like or might not like. But if you sit down and try to write every single sentence worried that a reader is not going to like it, you're never going to get through an entire paragraph, let alone an entire book. So don't let what you think your readers are going to feel about your book prevent you from actually writing your book. And don't be afraid to ask for help. People want to help you. People want you to succeed. You probably have more of a support network than you realize. Even if you're not with a publishing house, you have your friends, you have your family, you potentially have a community of other authors or writers that you share your work with. You have a support network, ask them for help. And if you are on a publishing deadline with a publishing house and you're afraid that you're going to miss your deadline or that your book is not going to be the quality you want it to be, reach out to your editor. Tell them you're worried that something isn't right. They will help you because they want to put out as good of a book as possible because your editor's name goes on the book too, as does your publishing house. So don't forget to ask for help. It could literally be a lifesaver for you and for your work.
Once again, I want to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and are looking for more writing or publishing related videos or some nerdy videos, feel free to subscribe to this channel. And if you are out there writing your book, write long and prosper.